Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to be here this morning. It's an amazing crowd. Uh, I was here, I think, in 2004, and it's amazing how this conference grew. And how, how many people are from Ireland? Can you raise your hand? And from other places? Oh, that's pretty amazing. Well, that's really cool. Um, yeah, so I was looking at the schedule and uh, there are a lot of amazing talks today and tomorrow about some amazing stuff on ma machine learning and other stuff like that. My talk is not going to be technical at all. Um, in fact, it's going to be about uh, uh, how we use uh, Python at Mozilla and how it compares to other languages. And I don't know a lot of, uh, about machine learning. Uh, the only stuff I know is that uh, we're doing some amazing stuff in the Python community around that. So that's really cool. All right, so I've been working at Mozilla for the past six years. I was there when uh, we uh, had Firefox 4 released, and it was in 2009, I think, and we were about 300 people working at Mozilla. And when I came at Mozilla, I was really surprised about the fact that they wanted to have some Python hackers around. Because for me, Firefox was just a browser uh, built in C++ with a little bit of JavaScript and some pieces of XML. So when I interviewed there, I, I felt like I was this dude going to Mozilla, this big JavaScript castle, trying to show why Python was cool. So but I, I wasn't sure what they wanted to do there uh, about Python, right? Um, so, what's Firefox? So, how many people use Firefox here? Oh, well, that's not too bad. We would lie for you. Yeah, well, you know, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so, what's Firefox? So, Firefox is a browser, right? But uh, when you're building a browser, you have to do other stuff around. You have to release the browser because of course, uh, we have to provide the browser for every platform, and uh, to do that, you have to do some release engineering. Uh, so that's one thing we're doing at Mozilla. Uh, we have a full team of people working at releasing uh, Firefox. And the other part is all the web services. So if you use Firefox, uh, we have this uh, neat feature uh, where you can synchronize your bookmarks. Uh, well, other browser have it too, but we do have it. Uh, and that's a web service, so, and that's another part where uh, we can do something else than C++, right? So that we have people working on web services. And we have websites, and uh, we have pretty, pretty big websites out there, and it goes way beyond Firefox. Uh, we have, uh, for example, the MDN, the Mozilla Developer Network, which is an amazing place if you want to learn about HTML or CSS. In fact, I mean, when you are searching for some stuff on Google uh, or other uh, search engine about uh, technology, web technology, uh, most of the time if you're looking for something about HTML or CSS, you end up in Stack Overflow or in MDN. Uh, because MDN has uh, like, I don't know, like hundreds and hundreds of pages on some cryptic, uh, uh, CSS uh, features and stuff like that, so it, it's pretty cool. And it's been translated in many, many languages. It's, it's, a, it's a large community. Uh, so that's for the website and the developers' tools because, you know, if you want to change something in Firefox because it's open source, you have to compile it. So how you do this? Um, right, so when I joined uh, Mozilla in 2009, that's how languages looked uh, uh, in, uh, in uh, Mozilla. Uh, for all the release engineering, we have a bunch of Perl scripts, uh, some Python, and uh, Billbot. And Billbot is still used today, and it was like the major stuff uh, to, to release Firefox. And we had uh, this amazing place uh, in Mountain View in one of uh, our room where we have a stack of Mac minis to build Firefox. So every time you wanted to beat Firefox, uh, uh, you had like all these Mac minis building them and uh, we were uh, testing and building Firefox uh, using BuildBot. So how, how many people know BuildBot? 
All right, so BuildBot is uh, like the grandpa of, uh, I don't know, Travis CI and Jenkins and all those tools. It's built in Python and Twisted, and, and the guy who built it uh, 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 works at, at Mozilla. And it's, uh, I guess, uh, really cool because you can script uh, how you want your stuff to be built in Python, and then it, it acts exactly like Travis CI and stuff like that. And uh, we use it uh, a lot still, but we, we did move some stuff to Jenkins uh, uh, because Jenkins is also really cool. Uh, so that's for the reason engineering. So Python was not really used over there. And everywhere else, uh, Python was not used. When I came uh, at Mozilla, I was the only Python guy. And I was... Uh, in an environment where everything on the web services side and the websites uh, were built in PHP. Uh, PHP was king back then. Uh, they used for all the websites uh, tools like Cake PHP, which is like a, 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 a pretty good CMS to, to do some websites and stuff. And for the developers tools, everything was built using uh, make files. So, and that was uh, pretty hard if you were not like a Mac file expert and a GCC expert, and if you didn't know the right uh, flag for your GCC to, to compile Firefox in your whatever platform. And uh, it was hard for people from the community to uh, start uh, to contribute to Firefox because you had to compile it and run some tests and stuff like that. So yeah, and I remember uh, not so far ago we had like a, this huge uh, trees of Mac files in, f in uh, the Firefox code base just to build some stuff there. Um, yeah. So that was in 2009. And then, since then, uh, well, and I mean, 2009 is, it's a long time ago for uh, software, right? And for hardware too. I mean, I remember I had a CD player on my MacBook back then. So it was uh, like a long time ago. And some things changed, uh, so I have a note about uh, this slide here. I should not make fun of all of their languages. Uh, so yeah, some things changed. Uh, we did less Perl and PHP uh, because we had uh, uh, incentive to move to Python and other languages. So uh, Python was like uh, a really, really, uh, uh, Interesting stuff for Mozilla because of Django. Basically, uh, when we had those big UX, uh, websites uh, using KHPHP, we started to look at uh, Django, and Django was uh, really interesting for us because it had like a built-in ORM, it had some features we were looking for, and so they moved. They started to move all the big websites uh, at Mozilla from uh, uh, PHP to Django and uh, uh, that really, really uh, worked out. Uh, and back then, I think AMO, the add-ons Mozilla.org website was one of the biggest websites in the world in terms of uh, requests per second. I think we were around 10,000 requests per second just for that website, so it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, Node.js, well, uh, uh, People started to use Node.js because it's async and it's in JS and we were in a J JavaScript environment, so they were uh, really interested in trying to have JavaScript all the way to the stack from the client and to the server. And uh, we also started to use some Go uh, because it was simpler for people to package and, and push Go uh, on the servers, right? And Rust, well, I'll talk about Rust later. So that was the trend between 2009 and 2016. And now if we look at uh, how we use uh, languages in uh, Mozilla, uh, well, everything uh, on the release engineering and the developer tools moved from uh, other languages like Perl or doing some make files to Python because basically everything we could do with Perl and, and make files were simpler and uh, easier to do in Python. And on the web services side, we started to use many, many different uh, things. 
and uh, we started to use some Node.js uh, technology, some Go technology, and some Python. And all the websites were starting to be built in Django. Yeah, so uh, how many people here know AMO, the addonsmozilla.org website? All right, so every time you, you start Firefox uh, and you want to install uh, an add-on, basically that's where you're going. Uh, even if it's on your phone or, or your browser, it's where we have all the add-ons collected and it's like a huge uh, database of add-ons and an add-on is verified by Mozilla and, and then it gets to your browser and you download the XPI and, and stuff like that. Uh, this website is built in Django and it's, it's pretty huge. I mean, the, the Django website's uh, for uh, the add-ons Mozilla.org is still one of the biggest uh, website in the world in terms of uh, number of users uh, that goes there. And there is the other one I was talking about uh, earlier, the developer uh, Mozilla.org, uh, which is also built in Django. And, all right. And we have many, many other websites because what happened is uh, that uh, when we started to build some websites based on Django, we just cut, copy and pasted uh, our uh, websites and say, hey, you want to create a new website? Just, yeah, just take my uh, addons.mozilla.org website and uh, just uh, change a few templates here and there, and there you go. So. Like most of our websites today are built in, in, in Django. Uh, web services. So all the web services move to, most of the web services move to uh, Python. So we have Firefox Sync, the stuff that uh, syncs all the bookmarks, uh, that's using Pyramid. Uh, so how many people use Pyramid here? All right. Uh, and uh, so what do you use? Uh, like Flask? No? Kishoti. Kish oh, okay, Kishoti. Okay, well, I'm sorry, I was in my bubble. Uh, <laughs> I still think Pyramid is like the cool stuff, but okay, maybe not. Uh, so Koro, so every time your Firefox crashes, because it happens, uh, you, sense, you can send some crash stats to our server, so that's a pure Python uh, uh, app using SQL Alchemy. And we have web push. Web push is built using uh, Twisted now and uh, for the second version. Release engineering. So uh, the releasing engineering uh, is using Python for everything now. We have like a, a, a lot of little uh, uh, web sites and uh, uh, APIs that are used to, to build and ship uh, Firefox. For example, there is one called Bullrog that's uh, used by uh, our engineers to decide uh, which version uh, of which binary should be sent to Firefox. So every time you, you start Firefox, it talks with Bolrog and asks Bolrog, hey, should I get an update for, for my Firefox? And that's the website, that's the uh, uh, system that decides if you get an update. And that's built using Django and some web services in pure Python. And we have uh, other stuff like Pulse Guardian, which is a uh, broker uh, using a RabbitMQ and Kombu that will uh, let people get events of what's going on in the Mozilla community. So every time you, you have like a, uh, something happening on the RC channel or on the mailing list or on GitHub or Bugzilla, everything is sent to the same broker there, the, the Guardian and you can uh, um, get information about uh, uh, some project there, so it's pretty cool. And developer tools, so I said earlier that if you wanted to build uh, Firefox, you had to use Mac files, and that changed. Now we have something that's called Mac, Mac, I guess, in German, and it's built uh, using a pure Python, and it's basically uh, a, a command line interface you can use to build Python, and it's fantastic. It's uh, integrating with uh, uh, Mercurial, and if you want to build some Python, it's very smart, and it'll let you, uh, sorry, if you want to build Firefox, it's very easy to do it with this tool, and faster, like it's 10 times faster than what we have to uh, with make files. So if you want to contribute to Firefox, 
you can just download uh, these tools and uh, it's gonna do everything needed to, to build a, a Firefox. And all those projects are open source and uh, the community around those projects are way beyond uh, people at Mozilla Corporation. And we have, we're trying for all our tools to have communities uh, around uh, what we're building. So if you're interested in any of these projects, you can just jump in and contribute and do some stuff there. So, uh, What's next on Mozilla? So uh, when I uh, prepared this talk, uh, I did a little poll uh, at Mozilla internally just to see how people felt about Python and all the languages. And I had uh, around 120 answers. So that's, that's not bad. I mean, that's a lot of people. Uh, Mozilla is uh, a little bit over a thousand people uh, these days and I guess half of them are, are engineers working on some code. So I guess it's a good chunk of people working on, on some coding. Uh, and well, the good news is that uh, I didn't know about it, but uh, like half of them used, used Python uh, as their primary language. And even people working on the platform, on Firefox uh, and C++. And 90% of them uh, used Python in the past six months. So I guess my poll was relevant. And I asked them, so as a developer, what are the top three things you like and you hate about Python? So that was the answers. Um, basically what they like about Python is the readability, <laughs> The fact that there is a rich ecosystem, like if you want to have, like I don't know, lib that interact with LDAP, uh, we have something that's pretty robust uh, on on the cheese shop uh, PyPI. If you want to, I mean, it's it's pretty known that uh, uh, it's easy to start with uh, Python uh, if you want to interact with anything, and the simplicity, like people that are joining uh, the Mozilla community. Even if uh, they don't know how to code in Python, if they know how to code in C++, it's easy to jump in and start to code in Python. And what do they hate about Python? So the Python 2 versus Python 3 mass. So how many people use Python 3 as their main language here? All right, see, okay, and Python, th uh, I said 2 or 3? Three? Uh, 3, okay, and 2? And 3 again? And a mix of both? All right, well, it's, well, if you ask the same question, maybe two or three years ago, most people used Python 2, right? And because there's no, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. There is no big incentive to move to Python 3, at least from my perspective. I mean, Python 3, you have really interesting stuff coming now, but like two or three years ago, well, Python 2 is fine. I mean, for what we're doing, it's it's working, right? So So people were, trying to do the right thing in their Python project and they were completely lost with, uh, yeah, you have to use six or you have to use this lib to do that stuff and, and they didn't understand all the fuss about bytes versus strings and stuff like that. Uh, they're still not, but yeah. And packaging, well, packaging is still a pain point. Um, I've seen some blog posts about the fact that packaging is solved now, but well, no, sorry, packaging will never be solved and it's not uh, uh, specific to Python. Packaging is just pain, that's it, I mean. And, uh, but for Python, it's uh, more of a pain because Python is uh, an operating system language, it's everywhere. So when you start to do some packaging uh, and you wanna deploy your stuff, I don't know, on Red Hat, you will have an op somewhere telling you that you have to do an RPM uh, uh, spec file for your Python project and you will have a Node.js developer telling you, uh, laughing at you, hey, I don't need to do that, I just push NPM and I'm fine. So yeah, uh, so that's part of why people hate Python. And it's not statically typed, so I was surprised that came in the uh, top three reason. I'm not exactly sure why because for me, it's not a problem at all, but for the crowds of people that are building a, a, a software using C++, it's a problem. Uh, they, 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 they feel like a good language should be statically typed. 
And I think that uh, what uh, Guido is doing uh, right now to try to have some annotation and some hints so your Python is kind of statically typed is interesting for a lot of uh, folks uh, that uh, want to do some coding with, uh, with Python. Uh, so that's the poll uh, results. Uh, what, what version of Python do you use the most? So most of people still use Python 2 because they don't have any incentive to move to Python 3. And I think people will just move to Python 3 without really knowing it. Like, hey, Python 2.7, end of line. Okay, well, I'll just use Python 3 and that's it. Uh, I mean, they, they won't even feel it, I think. Uh, some people, I mean, 20% of them are trying to do something that's compatible with Python 2 and Python 3 because for our project that are uh, uh, used outside Mozilla, it makes sense for people to have Python 3. Some people use Python 3 because, hey, why not? I'm starting a new project and I just, uh, Python 3 is fine, right? And we have one project in production using PyPy. Uh, that's pretty cool. And uh, some people uh, internally wants, want to push PyPy in production because it's really faster for, for some our, of our projects. So, uh, uh, so I asked also uh, to my peers if they were to start a new web app with HTML, so I guess a website, something where you have to do some templating or whatever. Half of them will, would use uh, Python-based frameworks like Django or Flask or stuff like that. We have now a good chunk of people that moved to Node.js to do some, some, uh, some websites, uh, but uh, Python is still uh, the strongest uh, uh, thing to do websites on Mozilla. Uh, and if you were to start a web service, so a HTTP API that produces JSON after some SQL queries, uh, half of them would use uh, Python. 25% uh, uh, would use Node.js. And what's really interesting here is that we have a good chunk of people at Mozilla that are interested into Rust. They want to see if they can build something with Rust, some web services with Rust. Uh, so Rust is our new uh, language we're developing in the Mozilla community. It's like, well, a C, uh, uh, like a, uh, it's a secured language built uh, to uh, 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 refactor Firefox, I guess. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay, well, sorry about that. So I guess you can merge the yellow slice with the pink slice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. Oh, well, you know, polls. <laughs> you can tell them whatever you want. I, I had other polls reserved I didn't show there, you know. Just took the one I liked. <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I just want to go back to the uh, Go versus Python thing. Uh, I, I just want to tell you a cool story about Web Push. So, Web Push is a technology uh, uh, created by the W3C where you can interact live with uh, browsers. So, basically, you're in Facebook and you have your friend showing you cat pictures and uh, you want to know that there is a new cat picture. You want to know it right away. So instead of doing some polling, HTTP polling, you have a WebSocket that's always open. And Web Push is a standard uh, where uh, we keep one uh, socket connection open for every browser, and we can tell people, hey, something's up. So hey, you have a new cat picture uh, on your Facebook account, and we. Uh, uh, had to implement this um, uh, service at, at Mozilla um, and people, the team that started to build it were like, hey, we should not build this using uh, Python, we should build this using Go because Go is so much faster and 
Python is really bad at handling a lot of connection, and we've read a lot, a lot of cool blog posts at U, on the Urban Airship uh, uh, website that says that they were able to handle a lot of connection with Go, and Go is the future, and Python is dead, and we should use Go everywhere. So they built uh, the first version of Web Push using Go uh, 1.2. And uh, of course, it was not a silver bullet, and they, they had some issues. Uh, part of the issue they had were that it's really hard to do some error management uh, in Go. It's not like in Python, where it's quite easy to like uh, catch errors here and there. And in Go, if you want uh, to debug, it's really painful. Like when we started to have some problem with the web push stack, uh, it was really hard uh, to know what was going on with the Go routine. We had some leaks, and we had a, a very hard time to do the proper debugging uh, in Go. And testing in Go is really hard, because if you want to do the proper testing, you have to write, everything has to be an interface. So you end up uh, with uh, test cases where you have like 50, uh, uh, interface declaration just for two lines in your tests. And so p the team that built the, the web push stack ended up with 65% 60 of code coverage for, their, for the web push, which is just an API, right? A HTTP API, a WebSocket API. And uh, they couldn't manage to go uh, up 65%. It was too tedious. Uh, so, but we pushed it in production. We had to 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 get the biggest uh, uh, Amazon boxes to deploy it with a, a lot of RAM because every user had to keep one connection open all the time with our server, right? And uh, every time it was using a lot of RAM, and we were not able to have millions and millions of of uh, socket connection. Okay, it's five minutes. Uh, open on each server, unlike uh, what we read on the internet, uh, that didn't happen. We were able to have uh, maybe 150,000 uh, uh, socket open per, per server, which is not too bad. And then someone came up with the idea of uh, prototyping a new version of uh, uh, the project using Twisted. Uh, so uh, they built the same service with Python 2.7 and Twisted in four days. And when we started to bench it, it used way less memory and everything was under control. We don't have any leaks uh, in our uh, coroutine or in all our socket uh, layer. Everything was under control because even if the Twisted documentation sometimes is hard to read, it's clean, it's, it's a clean code base, and it's, really, uh, uh, it's not hard to do uh, a clean async uh, thing in Twisted. And we uh, then decided to move to PyPy in production for this project, and it was almost as fast as Go. So at the end of the day, what happened is that we moved back from Go to Python for all these reasons uh, because Python was much more convenient. Even if it was uh, not as fast as Go, it was just better for, for, for that job. Uh, so yeah, uh, about the sim system tools, uh, if we ask people at Mozilla what they would use, Python is still uh, the biggest uh, a player there, and uh, Rust is also something that's uh, taking a lot of ground at Mozilla because it was it was a language built uh, to rebuild Firefox, but uh, it's now a language we use a lot for system uh, tools because it's uh, secure, it's easy to ship, uh, it's a simple binary like a Go, and uh, it, the code is really clean. Yeah, that's, that's my slide about Rust. Um, yeah, it's faster. Uh, it's nicer to write than C. Uh, you don't have any uh, worry to, to have about memory allocation. It's, I mean, if you're coming from a Python background, uh, coding in Rust is, is really, really cool. Um, it's 
a community that's really going strong now. Uh, we have more and more people working on it and we have some kind of standard library and you have uh, more and more tools on top of Rust. Uh, I hear they already have some uh, uh, web framework built in Rust. Uh, there is Cargo, which is like the packaging system uh, that works uh, for, for Rust. It's, it's, it was built uh, brand new from scratch, so they didn't have all the problems we had in the Python community with the uh, these two tools or setup tools, they were like, hey, okay, let's try it and let's not do like in the Python community, let's do it as best as we can from day one. So it's pretty good. Uh, and it's easy to use from Python if you want to write something, uh, um, a compiled uh, extension in, in with your Python project, you should give a shot uh, to, to Rust uh, because with CFFI, it's super easy to link. Uh, I have 12 seconds left. Uh, yeah, so that's my forecast for Python, uh, for languages at Mozilla in the next five years. I think uh, what's going to happen is that Python is going to stay strong everywhere uh, um, and Rust is going to emerge for everything we're doing in the, at the system level and for the web services and uh, Rust is also going to be added in Firefox, the browser. We're starting to move some pieces of Firefox from C++ to Rust. And I think at some point uh, we'll have the majority of the, the uh, base layer in Firefox built in Rust instead of uh, C++. That's, that was the goal. And Django is uh, uh, strong on the website's uh, side of things and is going to stay there. Uh, yeah, that's it. So this is all the projects uh, people uh, at Mozilla Corporation work on uh, for the Mozilla community. Um, we have a lot of them. You can look at on the GitHub, uh, so github.com slash Mozilla, and there is also Mozilla-services, and everything is open source, and we welcome contributors. So if you're interested in any of this project, don't hesitate to, to go there and talk with people. And yeah, that's it.